It was a cool day in Carroll County, Virginia on March 14, 1912. In the county courtroom, the verdict had been passed down that a local merchant, farmer, and county official named Floyd Allen was guilty of interfering with a deputy in the performance of his duty. Floyd stood up and said, I ain't a-goin', and as he fumbled with his coat's buttons to reveal a pistol, gunshots rang out from his son Claude and his nephews who had smuggled weapons into the courtroom. A gunfight erupted between the court officials and the Allen clan. The melee spilled out into the street as the Allens took cover behind a Confederate monument and discharged their pistols. When the shooting ended, the Judge Thornton L. Massey, the Sheriff Louis Webb, the Commonwealth Attorney William Foster, a juror, and a witness in the case lay dead or dying. Many of the Allens were wounded and limped off. Welcome everyone to Half History Will Travel. I am your host, the Wilder Historian, and when this incident took place, newspapers all over the country ran stories about it. But they chalked up the skirmish as the result of backward hillbillies unable to abide by the laws. However, the story is much more nuanced than that. This was not simply the story of a son attempting to extricate his father from going to jail. This was a political battle, stemming from the state of Virginia's new constitution. A change in the political balance of power emerged in southwestern Virginia in the early 1900s. In Carroll County specifically, Republicans had taken over many of the local governmental positions, thus displacing the Democratic Allen family and disrupting political power within the region. Now, many of the court officials were Republicans and they were eager to put the Allen family in their place. Two brothers, Wesley and Sidna Edwards, family of Floyd Allen, got into a fight during a Primitive Baptist Church service led by their uncle Garland Allen. Police came and arrested the two young men, binding one with ropes and handcuffing the other. The deputies transported them by buggy through the town and stopped in front of Sidna Allen's store. Floyd saw this as humiliating and excessive and proceeded to set the boys free himself, still feeling as though his former political pull would protect him from any legal action for doing such an act but he was wrong. The political tables had turned against the Allen family and Floyd in particular. As part of the Progressive Era reform, Virginia's judicial structure became more centralized shortly after the turn of the century. Under the new constitution proclaimed by a constitutional convention in 1902, the court system of Virginia changed significantly. Though the convention sat mainly to disenfranchise black voters, the delegates modified other aspects of state government as well. In various forms, monthly county courts had anchored Virginia's judiciary since colonial times, but the new constitution abolished them and placed their authority in circuit courts in which a single full-time judge served several counties on a less frequent basis. The state legislature still appointed judges, but each delegate had less assurance of dictating that his home county's court will be served by a local judge of his choice. Judges could no longer practice law simultaneously as they could under the county court system, and their status as regional figures made them less likely to serve as heads of county political rings, and thus less responsive to local political pressure. Corrupt courthouse rings sometimes associated with county judges featured prominently in the democratic political machine that Thomas S. Martin had controlled in Virginia since the early 1890s. Though this judicial change did not directly assault that arrangement, the convention delegates at least acknowledged the problem, and in the case of Carroll County, the new system made a difference. Through their political and family ties, the Allen brothers, Floyd, Sidna, and Garland, caused havoc in the Hillsville area and other parts of Carroll County. Prone to violence, they rarely saw a sentence carried out against them. Under the old Virginia Constitution, a judge threw out charges against the Allens for assaulting a man during a meeting about extending railroads to the southern part of the county. On another occasion a decade later, Floyd Allen and brother Jack Allen fell out in a dispute over some blockade or illegal liquor that their father had on hand when he died. Jack was administrator, and he did not have the liquor appraised. They met at a magistrate's court and shot each other, and they lingered between life and death for several weeks. However, they recovered and were indicted when the case came on to be heard that being in the days of the county court, the judge from the bench announced that this was a family quarrel and had been settled as such and directed a verdict of not guilty. 
again the powers that be, temporized with this clan. In February 1898, the court appointed Jasper Jack Allen, brother of Floyd and Sidna, to be administrator of the estate of their father, Jeremiah Allen, and Sidna provided Jack's required bond. In March, however, Sidna withdrew his bond, in all likelihood because the gold fever had stricken him. He was preparing for what would be a nine-month excursion to Alaska and the Hawaiian Islands, Sidna's self-described first trip into the outside world. Sidna's actions left the county sheriff as administrator and apparently Jack and Floyd at odds. A brief news item from October 1899 reported, matter-of-factly, that a desperate row took place between two brothers, Floyd and Jack Allen, who had been at outs for some time over a business matter. It seems that the brothers had a trial Saturday, and the shooting grew out of this. Floyd Allen shot first, the ball striking his brother Jack Allen in the forehead, glancing around the skull, making a painful though not serious wound. Floyd was shot three times, once in the arm, one time in the leg, and the third shot entering the left side of his body, the latter being the most serious shot fired during the difficulty. In July 1900, having recovered, the brothers faced charges for shooting each other with pistols. The county court under Judge Oglesby, who served in that role from January 1892 until the end of the county court system in 1904, heard the case in August 1900, and the same jury found each man not guilty. Just as the election of a slate of Republican candidates meant that the court officials and law enforcement officers no longer supported the Allens, the debut of the new circuit court assured that the family members no longer faced a sympathetic local judge. Hillsville attorney S.W. Tompkins cried to Governor Mann that the citizens here have been terrorized for years by this Allen clan, and that Virginia's money could not be spent in a better way than in this way making it possible for law-abiding citizens of the Commonwealth to feel like they are safe from a mob violence by bringing this clan to justice. One judge of Carroll County gave a detailed description of Floyd Allen. It was not long after I commenced to hold the courts in Carroll in 1904 that I learned something of the Allens. Several of them at this time were rated as very bad, dangerous men. Floyd Allen was perhaps the worst man of the clan, overbearing, vindictive, high-tempered, brutal, with no respect for law and little or no regard for human life. During my term of office, Floyd Allen was several times charged with violations of law. In several instances, he escaped indictment. I am satisfied because the witnesses were afraid to testify to the facts before the grand jury. Now the political machine had turned against the Allens and Floyd in particular. After the courtroom massacre, local residents telegraphed the governor saying, Judge Massey shot dead at the bench, Commonwealth shot dead at the bar, the sheriff shot dead in the courthouse, several others wounded, help wanted. Governor Mann wasted no time in calling on the Baldwin Feltz Detective Agency out of Roanoke, Virginia to arrest the perpetrators. Within days, the majority of the Allen clan were taken into custody. Journalists around the country distorted the shooting, manhunt, and series of trials through a deeply stereotypical, flawed understanding of the Appalachian region. Most ignored the facts that the Allens were prosperous, somewhat educated, and economically tied to other states and regions in favor of showing them and all Carroll County residents as isolated and backward mountaineers. This was not a family feud or simply a clannish situation taking part in the mountains. This was the result of a change in Virginia politics that had local implications for men like the Allens. The state of Virginia executed Floyd Allen and his son Claude in March 1913 for the murders of court officials and other family members served lengthy prison sentences for their role in the gunfight. Thank you all for watching. I hope this highlighted a moment in Virginia history that you may not have been familiar with. This story truly demonstrates how state or national politics can significantly impact local governments. Thank you all and have a great day.